In this tutorial, I am going to take a look at power system protection in Power Factory software. From examples of Power Factory software, let's open Transmission System and give a brief information about power system protection features. Suppose that we have a power network system which consists of two voltage levels, one with 225 kilovolt line-to-line -line voltage and the other with 90 kilovolt line-to-line -line voltage. As we can see here, the line diagram of these two voltage levels. From the edit relevant object, we will notice that the relay model is defined for this network system. If we click on it, we will see different relay models with category, relay type, applications, and many other characteristics. To see the location of relays, right click and select marking graphic. Then double click on single line diagram. Now we can see the location of the selected relay. If we select all relays and click on marking graphic, we will notice all the location of relays. We can also specify the relays from diagram coloring. Select secondary equipment and from here, select relays, current and voltage transformers. In the preview, the relays are presented in read only current transformers in green, only voltage transformers in black, and an instrument transformers in brown color. Click OK. Now we can see that all transmission lines which are coloring as read have a relay model. Let us enter again to our relay model in order to know more about their internal structures. If we double click on one of the relay, the same as the other elements, we can also define type for it. If we enter to the type, we will see all the characteristics related to that relay. For example, it is a distance protection. There can be different categories such as overcurrent, directionals, frequency, voltage, and many other relays that can be defined. Relay definition is actually a block definition that all the characteristics of our relays were defined. By clicking on the contents, we will see all the objects that were defined in block definitions and can access to each of them. In advanced data type, the range of impedance can be defined and we can calculate it as secondary ohm or primary ohm. Secondary ohm is actually can be used as the relay ohm since it is located next to relay, not network. As we know, our relay protections are connected with voltage and current transformers to the network system. So we can say that the secondary ohm is located in the primary side of transformers or next to relay, but the primary ohm is located in the secondary side of transformers or to the network system side. There is also a slot definition for our relay, and each of them has a specific type. If we double click on one of the type, we will specify the range of nominal currents and nominal voltages. Later, we will discuss about them in more details and close it. Here, we will see all the elements of our relay. If we double click it, we can notice the amount of nominal currents, nominal voltage, and also the type. From here, we can change the range type of our nominal currents as stepped, continuous, and discrete. From here, we will see the location of our relay, which is located between these two 
bus bars. In current or voltage transformer, there is nothing to be changed. And this can be changed from basic data type by clicking on CT and VT or voltage transformer. The next step is maximum or minimum fault currents. Here we can specify minimum phase fault currents, maximum phase fault current, minimum air fault currents, and maximum air fault current. It was an explanation about the relay and the library informations. If you want to see the inner block diagram of a relay protection, from the relay model, right click on one of the relay and click on show graphic. Here we will see the inner block diagram of our relay. And we will also see all the slots that were defined in the relay frame. If we zoom it, we notice that each slot is defined by the number of input and output signals. The signal lines define how the slots are interconnected. By double clicking on each of these slots, we can enter to the corresponding element relay. And here we can set range for all parameters, as we just have discussed about. That is all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I will discuss about how to model relay protections in a network system. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.